Hey there, ghoulies! It's Sokane, your local vampire. And it's so me once again. I'm just kidding. It's Sammy, uh, your average local demon, you know? Yeah, and welcome to a spook hour. Where all the things of spook. <laughs> all the things of spook, yes. You guys know us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we love our spook. And Happy New Year to everybody. Sorry that we didn't do a podcast before before Christmas or before the end of the New Year. Uh, I was sick and then Sammy wasn't feeling well and then it was Christmas. So, <laughs> didn't really have much time on our schedule, um, but we're back. No more sickness. We're back and we have, yeah, we're back and we have fun things planned. Yeah. So today we have the plan of we're going to talk about our top five horror games that both of us have played and uh that have scared us because you know you've seen us play games if you watch my streams or my videos and not a lot of things freak us out i mean yeah we might get startled but like scared scared doesn't happen very often so we're gonna talk about the five games that scared us our top five and kind of the stories behind them so you guys kind of get like a little insight into them if you don't know of them it's just it's games that have more of a psychological base for me i like scary games but psychological horror games really go into detail and depth of story storylines and stuff yeah the psychological ones definitely get me too i don't the paranormal ones i like but they don't really scare me it's the psychological ones because they really get in my head it's like a visual novel. Like, a lot of them are like visual novels. They know where to spook you at. Like, it's the atmosphere for me. It's like the ambience, walking into the game and having that ambience noise, and then just the psychological behind it can really get me more scared than jump scares. Because, like, you know, cheap jump scares are good for a bit, but it's... You know, you're walking into a room and not knowing what's going to happen is, for me, makes a game ten times scarier. Like, just the noise itself can make a game scarier for me. Yeah, for sure. Ambience I don't know is about you, Yeah, ambience yeah. is, is and definitely there, one of those things, for sure. Yeah, and I think that there's some devs that just really get how horror works in general. Like, there's some devs that just you know that's their project is to make people get into their game feel like you're actually there and i think that's like the key really getting into like horror games is that you can like imagine yourself in that place you know you just forget for a second that you're actually playing a game if you can do that then you win me over <laughs> yeah exactly 100 percent. so with that being said I want to say for, like, my first one, I would say for a game that really, really spooked me, um, I'll go into, like, say, I would say PT is definitely a top five. PT has that ambience noise. It has that jump scare factor. But it also has you scared of, like, the unknown and the repetitiveness of uh, walking in a circle. It's like, no matter how many times you walk around, uh, it's like you're going into this loop. It's kind of like the Twilight Zone. I think that's why I always go back to, like, PT being, like, one of the scariest games, like, I've seen played uh, and experienced just because you're literally stuck in a loophole. And time is not favored on your side. <laughs> mm-hmm, for sure. That one's definitely a spooky one. Uh, it's probably one of my top fives as well. I I remember I played it on the computer, so mine was a remake of the original, so not quite the same. I've seen the original be played, and I remember watching people play it and being like, ah, oh, that's not a scary game. Like, whatever, okay, like, sure. And when the when I first watched it, it was when I was not super into horror games, so I was like, that would be terrifying. And then once I had played a bunch of them, I was like, oh, you know, like, that that wouldn't be that scary. Like, I can do this. 
And then when I actually played it, I was a whimpering mess of a vampire. <laughs> it also has a unique story. It, it has a unique story behind it. Because you're this person going in this loop and you really don't know what's going on. But as you go in this continuous loop, you kind of start realizing that a family was murdered. And you're being haunted in the process of that. And you're trying to figure out you're in this unfamiliar place, but you kind of like have some idea of like this looks familiar kind of to you. And you're in this like loophole and like you have these unknown entities kind of there. And you're being haunted as well in the process of it. And you're trying to figure out all these pieces and put them together to figure out like... There was a murder that happened. There was a massacre. Uh, I believe the person that is haunting you is your wife. <laughs> and she's pregnant. Well, she was pregnant. And basically, in the end of it, you find out that she was murdered in the house with her unborn child. So it's it's very spooky. <laughs> very spooky, for sure. And she follows you, and it's like the constant of the unknown of, like, is she going to be peeping around the corner? And you hear these, like, groans and moans. And uh, I just remember just being terrified of, like, is she going to be behind a door? Or is she going to be looking up from somewhere at me? Or am I going to run into her because it's, like, so dark? And it, it was just very well put together. Unfortunately, the, there's not the full game because it was, I believe, it was removed. But what you could play of it was terrifying. Definitely top five for me. Mm hmm for sure. Yeah, it was one of those things that the actual game got canceled, which sucks. And it was meant to be part of the Silent Hill franchise, I believe. Uh, but it just yes. it got canceled yes. because I don't know why. I think the the main person that was working on it either quit, got fired, moved on to different things. I don't really remember. But uh, it's it's they know how to make their games for sure. It was very spooky, and the fact that you really don't have anywhere to go, like you're stuck in this uh, like L of a loop of uh, literally an L of hallways. You go down one hallway, turn, and you go down the next one. And you only have, like, a certain amount of room to move around. And it's not like you can just run and leave. Like, you're you're stuck in this loop. And then once you kind of realize the story and what's going on, that makes it even more spooky. Definitely a good spooky game. Mm -hmm, for sure. I think one of my other ones that really, really got me uh, was Visage for me. It's very interesting. When you first kind of get into it, you're not really sure what the heck's going on. It, the atmosphere is very good. The noises are so good. Just the lighting, everything in that game is very spooky. You play through three different people's stories along with the person you are actually playing as. And you finally get to kind of figure out what happened to these three other people and yourself and kind of what's going on there. And you can get a good ending, a bad ending, um, a kind of in between. And it's really, I don't know, the, the atmosphere and the noises are just so creepy. And the way that they subtly put things in there in one of the chapters, the older lady. That's probably the one of the chapters I hate the most is the older lady. And it has nothing to do with the fact that she's an older lady. It's just she's it's kind of just creepy, like the way she talks and just I, I don't I'm not really I can't really pinpoint it. But her chapter, as well as the little girl's chapter is really spooky, although I did uh, find solace in making comic relief as one of the sounds kind of sounds like a Venusaur to me, like the Pokemon. And so now I call it Venusaur, and I would yell at it to make myself feel better. But holy crap, that game scared the bejesus out of me the first time I played it. I was so scared I didn't want to move. I didn't want to keep going. I was just like, nope, like, this game's too scary. I want to quit. 
and if you guys know me you know that that's not really what i do like i can get scared sure but i normally don't go no this is too scary i don't want to keep going visage was was definitely one of those for me it's probably i'd say in the top three never mind the top five for sure well and to go back on that what you're referring to visage is that not only that it was scary but the stories behind it each person had their own unique story of why they're in this like pandora like box like um kind of like what would you call it like um you're stuck in i wouldn't say hell but you're like stuck in your own like purgatory um, yeah purgatory you're stuck in your own purgatory and each person has a unique story like uh lucy's chapter was basically about a little girl that was possessed and her parents didn't believe her and unfortunately because it was too late and you know they just thought their daughter was having mental health which is a you know mental health is a very very strong factor in this game mm -hmm. um but, you know, they thought it was mental health, and it turns out that she was actually being possessed, and it was too late, and unfortunately, turn events that you find out that she ends up, you know, taking her own life because of it, and, uh, tr trigger warning, um, but that's one of the stories. Another one is the, the lady that, uh, Soki is referring to, who is Dolores, who is basically the whole time looking for her baby it's basically a really sad woman who all she really wants is to be reunited with her child and she has her own storyline and you know each character in there have their own storyline and each chapter is equally scary i don't think there is not one chapter that i wasn't afraid of to play <laughs> or what was going to happen just because of different scenarios but it was a very well developed game i believe they the developers of visage uh based it off of their love for pt so mm -hmm. it was kind of like another game that had that also type of um kind of like a loophole you're stuck in this house and each part of the house has its own like you pick up something find something unique and that starts that chapter but yes very top five very spooky very well developed game one of the games that will always stick out to me so yeah i totally agree with you so do with that one mm -hmm, for sure for sure that one was i think you were the one that told me to play that <laughs> yeah yeah yep, most of it's the a really game. really good one it stands out yeah. I mean, anybody to play it today would still be scared playing that game. Like, it gives you the chills. Like, it's just the ambience, noise, walking, and then being in a dark house and just hearing the little creaks and the sounds like, ee, ee, back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a really good developed game. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, One on my list, I would say this was a game that I really liked. Another game which deals with, I, I believe, like, um, trigger warning, like, alcoholism and, uh, you know, uh, depression um, was Infliction. Oh. <laughs> Infliction is one of those games where you're basically... You're, you're in your house and it's kind of like you can't, like, remember what's going on and you're trying to pick up the pieces of your, like, life like find out what happened, why you're here type of thing because you're kind of confused and it's basically your wife is haunting you the whole time you're in there and you're trying to figure out like what happened and eventually you find out like you were in some type of cult type thing and you did something really bad to your wife and now it's kind of like your wife is coming for her revenge and you're going to go to purgatory and uh, deal with your consequences in the end. But it was a very well developed game. I was terrified of the lady that was hunting me in there every freaking corner i was like looking behind me i was terrified to go into any of the rooms because you know you never know when you were going to run into her and they had those like jump scares like she would come out of nowhere and like snatch you up and it was just it was really really fun to play i was really scared it was fun to find out the story in the end and you're just like well damn like 
that's what happened. <laughs> and, then, and then it makes sense in the end. He, it makes sense why you end up where you are in the end because of, you know, doing bad things. Doing bad things causes consequences. Mm-hmm. So sure. another well-developed game. I really liked it. Infliction is definitely another good fun game if you like spooky stuff. Mm -hmm. That one was definitely spooky for me, too. I remember I played that one as well. And it was not as scary for me as Visage was, but it was definitely definitely spooky for sure. I remember there's a part where a painting talks to you, and I thought it was, like, the best thing ever. (laughs) It wasn't scary. Yeah, it It has some funny moments in there. (laughs) Yeah, it was just like, hey, a painting's talking to me. Like, what? (laughs) like you're doing bad things this is what happens when you do bad things yep <laughs> yep the painting was warning yeah. you it's like hey hey dude mm-hmm. yeah yeah listen to me you did some bad shit now you're in a you're in a predicament here and i don't <laughs> know how you're gonna get yourself out of it but you better remember yep yeah for sure i think yeah. one of my other another one that really stuck out from stuck stuck out not stuck out stuck out to me um that really spoke Mm -hmm. to me was father's day so this is by a game company called emica games both sammy and i absolutely love them we played every single game i think made by them and just the way that they make games they are i believe russian um developers and i don't know what it is but for some reason the Japanese and the Russian, they just know what's spooky. And for yes. Father's Day was a longer one, too. Like, MK games are all pretty short games. And Father's Day is still short, but a lot longer than a lot of the other ones. And it had creepy atmosphere. It had creepy dolls. It had a creepy house. You were in the woods with creepy grandma. There was just a lot of creepy in it, and there was many times where I did not want to go farther. I do actually remember I was doing a 12-hour stream, and I said, I'm not going to keep playing this game unless you guys want me to. And of course, chat was like, well, yeah, you're getting scared. Like, play more. And I said, you know what? Give me five more subs, and I'll keep playing this game. If you don't, I'll go do something else. And so somebody gifted five subs, and I had to continue and I was mad, and I was scared, but it was worth it. <laughs> it's a really good storyline. Um, I can't say that I really remember exactly what the story is. I think now that I'm saying that, it's kind of coming back to me. It has something to do with a kidnapped child, I believe, and it also goes with the game You Must, which is also made by Emika, right, Sammy? Yeah. Yeah, so it, they're both Amica games. Um, Father's Day is you're basically this person who has a time machine built, and you're going back to try to prevent um, a kidnapping from happening, basically, because there's these children that are coming up missing, and people don't really know why they're coming up missing, and you're this person, I believe, I think you're a cop, if I'm correct, but you have this time machine that you have built, you're going back in time, and it's kind of like you're seeing through the eyes of, like, a, uh, a serial killer, like, kidnapper, um, and you're basically, you get these clues that are happening, but in the process of that, you have, like, all the scary stuff happening, and it's kind of a little confusing using in the beginning but then once you start seeing what you're actually there for you're there to rescue a child before that child is actually you know actually something happens to them so if you go through the story and you actually um go through the process of it you are able to save that child before something bad happens but you are i guess you're this protagonist of this person trying to find these clues and put these pieces together to stop these um these uh uh kidnappings from happening and in the end you do um they do end up finding the person who did it i believe and he gets arrested and the children that he did kidnap before they actually find um find the children there and um basically in the end uh 
everything is saved, but it's also terrifying in the process of doing all that. So you get to be the kind of like a hero in the end by saving the child, but it's also like you're terrified because like there was many times like Soki said where I wanted to like quit because of like the stuff that you see it plays a lot of like uh heavy on the psychological aspect of things so like just you know just the setting of the atmosphere being so spooky pushes you not to want to go forward like you know and there's really good jump scares too like the jump scares in that game with emika are planned very well so it's not like boo like, you know you're expecting it it's when you least expect something's gonna happen is when it actually happens so it, it's terrifying you might see like a demon or like you know some like uh grandma like Soki was saying or something scary might happen but it's very unexpected and it really gets you when you're not like when you're least expecting it in my perspective of it but yes Emika Games is a small developer team but they do wonderful on um developing their games like their masterpiece to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're they're uh they're a small development team they're what you would call an indie development team but they mm -hmm. do so amazing their games never really give us issues like bugginess and stuff isn't really there as well which is very good nowadays and they're just they're yes. really spooky and their stories are just really good like they're just really good stories. Yes. They actually have a, a game coming out soon. Um, that's part of uh one of their collections, Summer of Fifty Eight. Oh my God, Summer of Fifty Eight is also by Emeka Games. Very good game. Uh, very spooky about a child orphanage, right? Soki, like mm -hmm. an abandoned child orphanage, and same atmosphere. You have this camera, like this night vision camera that you're like holding while you're going through stuff, the classrooms, and you just have these like terrifying jump scares and they, summer of 58, by the time you get to the end, um, it's kind of like, because there's going to be another part of the game, correct? Soki, like yeah. there's going to be another part of it. So the story is not done after yeah. playing summer of 58, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That one was also very good. It got me a few times. I believe that was one of the first horror games I played as a VTuber. And uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was it, w it was bad. There was lots of times I got jump scared and I had to, uh, I had to switch to the pause screen to laugh or to be like, oh my god, I'm going to have a heart attack. Like, they're, they're very well planned jump scares. It's like Sammy said, you know, they... They know when to place the jump scares, when you think you're safe, you're not. That kind of thing. For sure. And very well developed. Very well developed. Mm -hmm. Just very all, all around all around very, very good games, for sure. I have another one on my list that is by them as well, actually. Yeah, I think some part in their games, a little bit of their their games everything is connected but i would tell you like anything from emeka go for it try it out play it i we would not steer you wrong with it it's like i am very very like picky when it comes to horror games and one thing about me is that if i you know if i'm playing something i will give you my honest opinion about it just because, like, you know, the next person that's going to play it, you want them to have just as much as enjoyment as you out of the game. So, like, for me, Emeka is that. Like, I could not put anybody else's games compared to theirs. Like, it's just, for me, it's all, like, uh, well-developed. I I've played many horror games, and I, I feel like nothing compares to their games. Yeah. So it's just they're just they're the it factor right now with war <laughs> yeah for sure they really are they're they're so they're so good at what they do so if this ever if anyone from Emeka games ever sees this podcast likely or not likely we love your games please keep making them amen <laughs> yeah 
don't stop what you're doing even if you get tough critics keep doing what you're doing because your your games are great your your games are beyond anything that i've ever played with scaring me so a very good job done Mm -hmm. for sure for sure don't ever i mean don't stop we like it (laughs) i know we're very excited for yeah. uh from day to day that's the one that sammy's talking about that has to do with after summer 58 and you get to play like yes. a tiny snippet of it at the end of summer 58 so once you finish summer 58 after the credits um do stick around if you played the game or if you're gonna play the game because you can play a little bit and it kind of gives you a little insight into what from day to day will be like and if you know me and uh, how I feel about basements, then you will know why I think that game is going to terrify the crap out of me. I also played the demo of it like probably a year ago now, and it was pretty good. Pretty spooky with grandma and kitties. Yeah. The kitties aren't scary though. Yeah, it's a very good game. No, the kitties are cute. But uh, for day to day and summer 58, you're a journalist. So. That's something I forgot to say is that you're basically a journalist and you're going there and you're just, you're staying in on an abandoned orphanage, enough said. So you have to make it during the night and see if you can investigate and see if you can find any clues. So it's, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for (laughs) sure. Basically, you're by yourself in an abandoned building. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Pretty spooky. You have another one on your list, okay? Uh, yeah, the next one, um, since we're talking about Emika Games, I'll bring this one up. Uh, the mm-hmm. next one for me is Locked Up, which is another Emika Games. Um, oh, yeah. I don't yeah. really remember the storyline of it. I think it has to do with demon possession. I'm not totally sure. Sammy can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, it's kind of another yeah. PT-esque situation uh, where you're kind of, mm-hmm. you you do kind of go to different locations, but a majority of the game you're in the same-ish location. You got one long hallway and then one short hallway and a few rooms you can go in, but that's about it. But it's just, it's very spooky. The ambience is terrifying. Uh, just, again, Emika Games just makes such good games. And I don't really, I'm one of those people, you guys know me, I believe in the paranormal, but I'm one of those weird people that just because I believe in the paranormal does not mean that I believe in aliens, I don't necessarily believe in demons, uh, in the sense of like, if you think like, uh, a demon demon, like, like the red face demon from Insidious, like, it's not necessarily that I don't believe in demons, I believe that there's bad spirits, I don't really know that I'd call them demons. Yeah. I believe that possession can happen. I'm not saying it can't. I'm not recommending anybody go try, but it's one of those things that it it doesn't usually, it doesn't usually freak me out. If it has to do with possession, it doesn't really, it doesn't really spook me. Like it will make me feel like weird, especially if I watch like a horror movie that has something to do with possession, I'll feel like weird afterwards. Like I kind of put myself in a situation, I guess. So I'm like, that's like, that, that would suck. So I think that's kind of why Locked Up did really freak me out, especially because there's a few parts where you have to kind of go, Emika games in general, but a lot of horror games now I've noticed make it so you have to go back and forth. So you have to explore that creepy ass mm-hmm. atmosphere that you're in. And Locked Up is definitely one of those where you've got to go back and forth. And when something happens, you don't have a choice but to move towards it. And that's what really freaks me out is obviously I would rather back away from something that is happening in front of me that's spooky rather than walk towards it. So I know there was a lot of times where you can't run in that game. You can zoom in. You can't run though. So I would go walking towards this demon or this spooky thing slowly because that's just how your character walks. And I'd be like, if I could run at you, I would, but I can't. So I just have to very slowly walk Mm -hmm. towards you and wait for it to take my soul because that's what's going to happen. And it's just really corners are another thing. Like it's just because it's that like PTS room, it's got the hallways. So you got to go around the corner and there's noises and things get thrown at you and just it's it's really spooky. And like I said, I'm almost positive it has to do with demon possession 
but it's been a while since I played it. It so, does. Yeah, okay. So, see, Sammy knows. I, I pay attention to the storylines, I promise. I know what happens in these games. It's just been a while since I've played a lot of them, so um, I know that it has to do with the, the demon possession, and it's just... It has to do with a, a family, is that right, Sammy? It's a it's a family that a yeah. demon latches onto or something? Yeah, so to recap what Soki says, she's correct. It is about a demon. The person that is sent there is not the actual person, I believe, that has happened to. It's another person's family that is about to be sent there, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a warning. It's like a warning they're giving them. Like, this person's about to move into this house with this demon still there. And the first family, unfortunately, had some unfortunate events that had happened to them because of the demon. And you're kind of sent there for this warning to be for the next person coming in like hey this is going on can we stop this because i believe the father is a cop okay. um and it's what is scary about it is the immersed feeling that you have in there is that you get so immersed into the storyline of it and like what's going on that it's just the atmosphere itself is terrifying. So, like, for me, it was just um, the reality set in that it was, like, I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck. And, like, to recap what Soki said is that you can't go behind you. You have to constantly be moving forward. And moving forward is going towards, like, whatever the scary thing is there or, or what's waiting on the other side. So to progress further in the game you have to move forward not backwards and that and it can be very intense situations in those type of games and that's the kind of immersed feeling that I get that that I love about video games like that is that you can become so immersed into the game that it freaks you out so much that you don't want to play it anymore and those are the kind of scary games that I want to play because like you don't want to go into a game and feel like oh you can just breathe through this and like it was nothing no you want to go into that where it's where it makes you want to put down whatever you're doing and saying like I can't I, I have to push myself to keep going those are the type of games that I love and that developers are so creative doing like I could never imagine a million years to make a game so immersed to the point where you have somebody so terrified that they don't want to move forward you know so Anemica Games is is that type of like factor they have that factor to make you stop what you're doing and be like hey I need to take a five minute break before I move forward because this is an intense moment or something is about to happen and I need to prepare myself for what I'm going forward for does mm -hmm. that kind of make sense Soki yeah yeah totally yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's that's what I love so much about horror in general is that like things like that when you have a really good game that's well developed you get that immersed feeling and you know that part of you that's like you get that you know feeling in your stomach you're nervous you know your hands are sweating and like you get that when you play these games these games that we're talking about the immersion feeling that you're getting the atmosphere that you're getting you get all of that with those games mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure it's it's crazy <laughs> Most of the, those are most of yeah. the horror games I played at the beginning of being a VTuber, and almost every single one of them really freaked me out, but yeah, the two that I've named are definitely in my top five because they were just so spooky. I'm trying to think of another, oh, Outlast. Most <laughs> people, they don't get, this is going to be like, you've probably heard of it. The reason why I bring up Outlast is because it was one of the first, like, horror games that really, like, got me and was, like, in its own time frame, like, one of the best spooky games out there. You have this camera in your hand, you're going to, is it, like, in a, like, is it, like, a prison or, like, asylum type thing, right? It's an asylum, I believe, uh, yeah. That you go. Yeah, so you go in, you're going in, you have this camera, you're there to, like, um, basically get evidence of what's going on here, and in the process of this, you're getting chased by these scary, like, victims, or whatever you want to call them, inside 
there and you're in this like big loop and you have to hide and for me what made it so scary for me is that you have a battery and your battery runs out but you have this like night vision and the whole time you're in there you're using this night vision camera and you can see like you know whatever's chasing you walk past you very slowly and it's just like those intense moments of those chases and it's it's to me I always bring that up because it's one of my like you know first like really horror games that really got me into you know being terrified of horror games to like really get into it really enjoy it Mm -hmm. Uh, i know soki you played it i know you have your own opinion on it but it's i would say it's one of those like gems like hidden gems like yeah for sure if you ever get a chance to play it play it you know it's an, an experience that you have to do for yourself yeah but it's one of those uh uh, it's one of those, like, top games for me for Spook Factor. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely scary. It's just to the point that I got in the game, it was too difficult for me. I don't like having to solve things or having to figure out where you need to go and being chased. Oh, yeah. And that's just not the kind of horror that I like. So that's the only reason that I mm-hmm. got to the mm-hmm. point I got to and I just stopped because I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of just one of those things where I definitely agree. It's spooky. I would not want to be walking around an asylum where people were experimented on or whatever it is that happened to them. Like, no, thank Mm -hmm. you. Especially with a camcorder that runs out of batteries. I know I was getting stressed trying (laughs) to find batteries. Like it's, it is scary. It's definitely, it's definitely one of the good ones. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I just don't like having to run while trying to figure out what to do and usually because it means I die a billion times and then I'm just not scared anymore because I just keep dying you know like I like I like the psychological ones more so because yeah okay I feel like a lot of times in games once you die you kind of know like what is going to happen to you so then it's not expected yeah Yeah. you expect Mm -hmm. it especially if you're bad at faces like I am (laughs) but Things like the ones that we've mentioned before with, with, um, like the ones we played, like Visage, you can die, but it's more, a lot of them are just more psychological where you have to remember that whatever it is can't actually hurt you. And even in games like Outlast where you die, technically it can't actually hurt you anyway, no matter what it is, it can't hurt you. It's just a game. But, um... Yeah, that's the that's the only thing I had against Outlast, but that's just me personally because I'm bad at it. And that's the only reason. I'm sure if I was good at figuring things out in high intense situations, I would think it was better. I think that the story is pretty interesting and the ending I wasn't really a fan of, but the story is very interesting and just what they have going on. And then they have a two, and I don't even know what like the premise of two is, other than the there's whistleblower, a whistleblower, yeah, yeah, the DLC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you have the the DLC as well that kind of like shows you the how you got there in the first place in the first one, and so they're mm-hmm. they're definitely spooky, and I think that they're definitely good games. They're just not the game for me. That's all. Yeah, I mean, if you like a challenge and you're a gamer and you like that high quality chase and you you want those intense moments outlast is for you because you're definitely gonna have those like intense like chase moments and intense and emerging moments where you're like what do you do like i gotta hide i'm running out of battery so if you like survival horror like um challenges that is a, a perfect game to play outlast is perfect to play if you like a challenge for yeah sure. for sure for sure there's just so many games to choose from Sophie. like i can't even i have so many on my list like i can't even <laughs> there's so many i want to say because <laughs> there's so many good developed games you know there yeah. i've played so many and there's just so many it's just hard to choose from in my perspective <laughs> yeah i mean i was thinking about this last night and i was literally like okay hey, i got like father's day and like I can't even remember what the other one I said was. And then Sammy's like, well, what about this one? And this one? And this one? And this one? And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. true. Very true. <laughs> yeah. So I, I agree. It's hard for me to remember which ones have actually, like, legit scared me, though, because a lot of the ones that Sammy's named I played a while ago. 
However, I know for me, um, another one that really got me was Madison. And it wasn't uh, necessarily... Yes, mm -hmm. I don't think it was necessarily the actual story of Madison herself that freaked me out. It was fucking Bloonies that got me. I <laughs> had that stupid, Poor creepy Bloonies. Bloonies song in my head. And I think after I played Madison and like actually finished that part, I had nightmares about Bloonies for like two days. It was terrible, which is amazing. Games keep doing this. Give me nightmares. It's what I want. I know I sound like I'm delusional, but no, like scare me. That's what I want. I want to be scared and that kind of scared where I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. that was fine. And then I go to sleep and I have nightmares about it for two nights in a row. Like, do it. I like it. Keep doing it. However, it's yeah. about a family that, again, is possessed, I believe, um, or is yeah. about to like or, mental health. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's on the way to being possessed and it has it all ties into a camera and I just, I don't, the camera, ugh, I don't know what it is about, especially Polaroid cameras, like, bitch, I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but when games bring in Polaroid cameras where you can't see shit ahead of you and you gotta take pictures and you know there's something's gonna be there, you just don't know what it is, dear god, it's terrifying. I like how the game it is. works, I like the mechanic. I like, like, I just, I like everything about it. Like I said, Blue Knees was fucking horrifying. I felt bad for the monster of Blue Knees with his eyeballs and stuff. And, you know, he was just a poor lonely demon that everyone made fun of. And then he became mm -hmm. evil or something. I don't know. But, uh, it's, it's very spooky. The story is really, really good. Uh, I know that we're... <laughs> We were all making fun of it because it came out shortly around when uh, season four of Stranger Things came out with Vecna. Um, if you guys haven't, haven't seen it, I won't say much more other than clocks are a thing. And uh, th there's a clock in Madison. Well, there's clocks everywhere, but there's one specific clock that chimes <laughs> and it kind of sounds like Vecna's clock. And I know for a while we were, you know, mm -hmm. joking in my chat. Oh, is it Vecna? Is it Vecna? But... It was, it was definitely scary. Like the fact that I have to make jokes and that I had nightmares for two days after I finished it. It was just one of those really spooky games. Again, it, yes, it had to do with possession. And I know what I said earlier about demons and possession, but like, I wouldn't want that to be me, like bro. And the ending really, like really hit me. Like it was a lot of the times when endings like, that kind of ending happen. I don't want to spoil it for anyone that hasn't played Madison by now, but uh, the ending was just one of those ones that really got me, and I, I guess I just didn't expect it to, but it's a really good story. Uh, there are obviously jump scares, but the atmosphere itself is just spooky, and, you know, it does have a bit of a chase with Bloonies in there, and sometimes with Madison, there's certain points where you have to, like, get your ass moving or she comes after you very interesting story and really immersive too like i think uh yeah i think yeah i think the atmosphere was, was terrifying yeah she was like a witch or something wasn't she actually she was just like a normal person okay. she got possessed as well she's connected to it she's actually trying to possess you mm -hmm. yeah. um as the protagonist you're this character luca luca mm -hmm. luca, I luca. Think. yeah um you don't you're you can't really remember anything but that's part of like what happens when you're possessed is that you you can't really remember what's going on or what happened because when there is part of possession so as he's going through this house he's not only learning about madison's story but his grandmother they're all connected in some way the, the whole house the family the whole like i guess you would say bloodline is mm -hmm. you would say it and it all comes together in the end unfortunately like with the ending like it's not one of my favorite endings because like i really am rooting for the the person to like you know there's hope mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and unfortunately this is just the story of like what happens when you're being possessed and mm -hmm. luca is on the, the unfortunate soul that is being possessed in this um situation mm -hmm. 
another well developed it's one of those new developed so like the camera angle like the atmosphere in there the ambience it's i think like the whole camera angle going around the corner like the puzzles everything was just very well put together for that game i also agree medicine is another uh is like a top five really good game top 10 Mm -hmm. yeah in my opinion really spooky and uh definitely definitely a good hello hello cat (laughs) definitely a good uh a good spooky game to play for sure for sure especially if like demons freak you out then you should definitely try medicine for sure possession yeah possession that's a game for you i i do have one more for my list so hard because like there's so many that i can think of but yeah. I have recently played this not too long ago. It's called Devotion. It was actually a really, really good game. It was, it has its puzzles, you know, it has the immersed feeling like you're always being watched. I think like that game gave me chills because I, not that I had like a lot of like jump things jumping at me it's the fact of like how dark it is where there are spots where it's dark and there's no light and you have to push yourself forward to go like if your fear if your fear is being in the dark that game is very immersive with the dark and that's what makes you scared the whole time because you have to push yourself forward to go and turn on a light or go in the dark to move forward and the storyline is very good like there's these doors that you can't go into and you don't really understand it until the end why you can't get through those doors because those doors are locked because you have to figure out basically why you're there and it tells a story through the whole thing like you're getting this whole immersed story and you're putting these puzzle pieces together while you're there in the end and I just felt like it had such a good storyline and the whole time like I had chills playing it like I was scared because I I didn't know what was going to happen or what I was around the corner and in the end it has a very sad story of like what happened to like that person's family but again it's like it, it, and then the time frame that it happened and it's just like it's like you're there it's like i was there in that place and i i was terrified but it, it was a very very good game in the sense of drawing you in of wanting to know what happened to figure out the puzzles so that you can find out the end of the story i definitely would say like i'm a I have a big fear of dark corners and darkness and that game had me on my toes the whole time because it it was just like the immersed feeling of being in the dark and alone and just having feeling of being watched and that whole time I never felt even though I was in the dark and I was going through the storyline I never felt that I was alone because I felt I was being watched the whole time so it's a very good game. Uh, I know that you can only get it on the actual, is it the developer site? I think so, yeah. Like, the game? Yeah, you can't get it on Steam or anything. It was, like, banned in certain countries, I think. Mm -hmm. So you can't get it. But if you have a chance and you do find it and you can get it, it's a steal. It's one of those hidden gems. Um, I'm not not sure how many like i don't know if a lot of people played it but i definitely am a big fan of it and if you do get your hands on it do play it and enjoy because it's scary (laughs) yeah that's one of those ones that you you yeah it looks pretty spooky i actually just recently got it myself i'm nervous i'll play it eventually but uh, i believe it's red candle (laughs) is the uh is the is the yes, website yes um so if you want yes. to get it you can but it is banned in certain countries so if you are from a different country other than canada or the u.s uh i don't know that it's available for you so don't come for us if you can't play it i know that i think it's just the kind of uh the storyline of it that really got it banned other places now that I'm speaking. It's the government. It's yeah. the government, I think. It has yeah. something to do with government something based with in another government. country. Yes. So yeah. I, something like that. So but like she said, it's it's by Red Candle. So if you can get your hands on it, it's a hidden gem. 
do go for it. Do buy it. Do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. There is one more that I just thought of that I want to touch on, and I know Sammy's played this one too. It, I sure. don't remember who made it. Uh, we'll find out in a well, well, Sammy will remind me. I'm sure she knows. <laughs> uh, it is the game Welcome to Kowloon. I played that on my birthday, I do believe, for my birthday stream this year, and I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> it uh, has to do yes. with uh, the city of Kowloon, which I believe is in China. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I believe it's in China. Mm -hmm. And it was basically a like a whole, not even apartment building, but you basically play as a teenager or a young adult looking for a place to live because you've just moved to Kowloon for your job and you need a cheap place to live. It's a because, whole ass city, I think. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Kowloon, the whole walled city. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're basically trying to find a, a, a cheap place to live because you have no money, mm -hmm. you just moved here, like, yeah, that kind of thing. And just what you have to go, first of all, the atmosphere is horrifying. Uh, there are parts where they make sure that you thought you saw something, and you did. Uh, there are certain parts where they have, like, pieces of clothing that are hanging, but it looks like it's a fucking demon standing in the corner, and holy shit i know that there was lots of times sammy was in a call with me as i was playing it and i remember being like sammy sammy there's a demon in, there's a demon in the corner and then i walk up and it's pants hanging and i'm like oh mm -hmm. <laughs> and just like yeah. oh it was it was really spooky i know we were making fun of uh kind of just it's something that we've never seen so i guess we should i, I shouldn't really make fun of it but there's uh, a part with the bathroom that really freaks me out. And I know that we were uh, kind of giggling that the toilet was like you had to walk upstairs to go to the toilet. And then like the shower was in the corner, I think. And then you had the, the sink on the same like level or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it was all one room. And I was like, I, I obviously I've never been anywhere outside of Canada or the States. So I haven't been to these places. Maybe that's something that's normal for you guys if that's where you're from. So uh, it was just one of those things that like caught me off guard and was so not normal for me that I was like, what the heck? Uh, but yeah, there's there's parts in that game that I literally like that I remember that I can remember it very vividly. There's a dark hallway and you have to go down it. And when you do, you get screamed at by grandma and she runs at you and it is absolutely terrifying. And I just. I I think I had stopped for a whole good minute, and Sammy it even scared Sammy, and she had played the game before me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you remember who made that game, Sammy? Uh, the developer I forgot the name of the developer, but I think they also made Nine Child Street or something like that. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Another yeah. game. Mm -hmm. And from yeah, the yeah. darkness, yeah. It I was forgot the people. name. Yeah, and from the dark. Th yeah, I don't remember their name. They also are, I think, a small indie for developers. Yeah, it's but, like N nine four B or something. Yeah, something like that. yeah. If you have a chance, definitely check out their games. Their games are definitely spooky, very immersed, mm -hmm. and it, it's the same thing. Like, it's something's always lurking in the corner. <laughs> yeah, something's always hiding in the corner. Something's always there, and and that's one thing about you know the games that we have mentioned today is that, that all of those games have that like every game that we mention there's always something lurking or you feel like something's lurking you never feel like you're alone it's the immersed feeling that you get and it's just it's very enjoyable if you like if you're a big horror fan like we are this is like right up your alley this is something that you guys definitely would want to try out and play because I it's we're, we're, we wouldn't stare you wrong and there's so many other games that I wish I could list like that are really good like Hellseed is another one oh, man. I haven't even finished that game because I'm terrified of like just the ambience and the stuff that happens in that game I haven't even been able to finish it but there's just so many like underrated indie horror developers out there making well-developed games and it's it's like they they need more praise because the creativity and the thought process and the immersion and everything that they put into those games show 
so sure. much and i i just wish that people could get more credit for you know developing games like this because the uh creativity and thought process put into these games like i can't even go in to begin to explain how how yeah. well developed they are you can really tell that these developers think about their stories they think about everything yeah. and they they bring it together really really well and while we might have named mm -hmm. some that are bigger developers like the silent hill guys mm -hmm. they still all yes. know mm -hmm. what they're doing they all know their horror and especially with the two indie developers emika and i'm really sorry if i got the the name wrong but i'm pretty sure it's like n49b or something like that or mm -hmm. uh i, I Something along those lines. If you look on Steam, if you look up Nine Child Street, Welcome to Kowloon, or From the Darkness, those are all developed by the same people. They're amazing at what they do. Yeah. Even Nine Child Street was terrifying. From the Darkness was so mm -hmm. scary. I know that one of my friends told me about From the Darkness for forever ago, and I finally just played it recently-ish, and it was very spooky. So they really know their horror they really know what they're doing so if you guys want to try any of the games that we listed today like go for it because they are we we know our horror uh obviously we've got a whole horror podcast here going on we know what we're talking about sammy probably plays more horror games than i do but between the two of us i promise you we know what we're talking about <laughs> and there's always something lurking in the dark yeah. or in the corner whether it's pants or an actual demon you never know and if you guys have, like, if you guys play it and you want to give some feedback on some of the games that we listed and you go out there and you buy it and you play them, please let us know, like, if you enjoyed it or if it was a favorite for you. Or if you have any ideas of games that you think that we should play and that you've tried and maybe we haven't and you want to put some of the list out there or just give us some ideas of different games. I'm always down. I'm always looking for new games. I know Soki's always looking for new scary games to make us jump and scream. So <laughs> if you have ideas with that, please feel free to share your ideas. And, you know, I'm always willing to try something new, a mm -hmm. different game, something to scare me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So also, as you guys can see above, uh, above, I think it's above Sam, Sammy's head over there, uh, is my Ko-Fi link. If you guys want to support the podcast and just support the YouTube channel in general, you can go there. You can also kind of leave me posts, kind of, it's kind of like a Facebook or a Patreon type thing, uh, where you can leave me posts, I believe, uh, and so if you guys want to comment anything, or if you guys have spooky stories you want us to read, or whatever, you can send them there. Uh, if not, I might, uh, I'll figure out some other way that you guys can do it. I did set up a, uh, a subreddit for you guys to post stories if you want. I believe I called it Sokane's Spooky Stories, but I will have it linked. And I will also make sure that I link all of the games that we talked about today in the description so you guys can find them easily and don't have to go searching and hope that you have the right game. Not that it would be too difficult, yeah. because we did talk about the developers as well, but just makes it easier on you guys. You can just click a link and go see if it's the type of game you'd want to play. Exactly. Uh, well said. It's okay. I, and it, it'll make it easier for you guys, so you guys can just go click and enjoy the game, if mm -hmm. that's something that you want to do. Yeah, for sure. Especially the red candle one. <laughs> yes. Well, Ghoulies, I think this is almost our time where we get to say goodbye. It was lovely speaking with you guys again. I, I know we had some time in between, but with the holidays and everything, now we're back and we're ready to send some more spooks your way. <laughs> All the spooks. You guys will always have spooks with us. We'll never run out of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, if you have ideas, things that you guys want us to do, please feel free to comment and let us know your thoughts. We would love to hear it. And do you have anything else you would like to say before we close out? Okay. And if you guys don't already and you want to come see uh, me and Sammy get scared, I will also have my kick and twitch links below. I believe our lovely co-host Sammy here is going to start streaming sometime soon. So as soon as she starts streaming, I will link her uh, wherever she's streaming on below as well. Uh, just yeah. so you guys can check her out and check us both out. We're usually together when streaming, but um, you know, yeah. you can also check us out separately. <laughs> Exactly. Variety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we love you, ghoulies. We do very much. Don't forget to lock your doors. Check under the beds. 
and protect your closet. You never know what's lurking in the dark. Till we meet again. Till we meet Bye -bye, again, ghoulies. Bye. Bye.